Chapter 32 Her name was Daniela. He would miss them. On this particular day, Damien has made himself scarce. Gustavo and Dan had found a nice place to live and were about to start working on the dam's construction the following week. The two of them needed a few things to furnish their apartment, as well as some electrical supplies to put in their toolboxes. As they entered the appliance store, they were surprised by the extensive choice of brands for relatively modest prices. Gustavo looked at the largest refrigerator he could possibly find on the shop floor, while Arnaldo went to find some of the wiring tools and implements he would need to do the job. As he was looking around the shelves and displays, a young woman approached him. May I help you, senor? she asked politely, flashing a smile that Arnaldo would never forget. Oh yes, maybe you can. Do you know anything about electrical wiring? A little, and I'm sure my mother will be able to assist you if I can't. As they were talking, Gustavo came to join them. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Gustavo said, addressing the young woman. Gustavo, Arnaldo said, obviously taken aback. Well, I only said it because it's true, Gustavo argued defensively. And I don't mind it at all, I take it as a compliment. The name is Daniela, what's yours? Her eyes travelled from one man to the other. I'm Arnaldo Ricciuli, Dan replied, extending a hand. And this disrespectful oaf is my brother, Franco. Very nice to meet you both, Daniela said, throwing them a gentle smile. OK, I think we've got everything we need, Franco, Dan said, tossing a reproachful look at Gustavo. What about the fridge? Are we buying it or not? I mean, in this heat, we need something to keep the food and beer cool, don't we? Daniela tittered. If you come with me, I can show you a floor model that's gotten a little scratch on the side, hardly visible, but the price is what makes it very attractive. Dan and Gustavo followed the gorgeous woman to the back of the store. That's it. I'm in love, Gustavo erupted. That fridge looks just like the one I had dreamed about all my life. Dan and Daniela exchanged an amused glance. I guess you could call that a sale, Daniela, Dan said to her. If you can deliver it, I'll give you the address. In the days that followed, the two companions decorated their place as best they could when time permitted. Vicente was a hard master. He wanted the boys to be as successful as they could be, which demanded a lot of effort and very little time for leisurely pursuits. However, Arnaldo was not concentrating on the work at hand as well as he should have. He was distracted. His thoughts invariably veered to the beautiful Daniela. He had not returned to the store and he hardly knew anything more about her than her name. One night, when he and Gustavo arrived home, Damianos was there. He was obviously waiting for them. Are you here to drink our beer, you old cat? Dan asked jocularly. Well, a glass of milk and a few left over from that beautiful fridge of yours wouldn't go, miss. How about we go out for dinner? Dan suggested. I love Gustavo's cooking, but this is Friday, and maybe we could have a taste of what's on the menus downtown. What do you say? He looked at Damianos and Gustavo in turn. That sounds like a plan to me, Gustavo agreed readily. Yes, I'll be happy to join you, of course, Damianos said. But before we go, I'd like to talk to you, Dan, about Daniela. Yes, of course, Dan said, attempting to interrupt their shepherd. The latter raised a hand and shook it to stop Dan from his runaway train. I'd like you to understand that Daniela is in your future, very much part of it, in fact, so I suggest we make some sort of arrangement to meet with her this weekend. I knew it, Dan exclaimed. Thinking about her day in and day out was beginning to be annoying. I knew she was the one I had to meet. Besides, she resembles my mother. Exactly, and that's where we will need to have a talk before we go any further in this venture. Once the three men sat down in the living room of the apartment, Demianos seemed impatient to return to the subject of Daniela and Arnaldo's future. It's been a very, very long journey, gentlemen, and one that I am not soon likely to forget. Hear, hear, Gustavo agreed. Yes, but this last episode, which you are about to relive as Arnaldo, Dan, is a delicate one. Daniela, as you correctly presumed, is to become your wife, yet it would be improper for you to relive your father's life after meeting and perhaps proposing to the dear young woman. Memories of this encounter will remain with you, and this is something that cannot happen. Therefore, you should go ahead and meet Daniela this weekend, as I proposed, but you will not go any further. Your father's memory of the meeting will remain intact, but will be erased from your own memory, Dan. He reclined to the back of his chair. Do you understand what I'm saying? Dan nodded. Absolutely. It would be indecent to go any further, I understand. Besides, living his life while he's still here might be a little difficult. Precisely, Damianos answered. 
he turned his attention to Gustavo, and I think the same goes for Franco. We now need to distance ourselves from the past and retrace our step toward the future, or your present, Dan. Dan's smile broadened. Does this mean we're going home? In a word, yes. That's worth celebrating, Gustavo said, chuckling. And when is that fantastic event likely to occur? Not so fast, Gustavo, Damiano said. We need to do a few things first. What things are those? Dan was all the more curious now. After dinner, I think I will invite Chippewa, your dream maker, to join us. Gustavo and Dan looked at each other and then at Damianos inquisitively. Why? Dan asked. Because I believe it would be a good idea for you to go back to the beginning and revisit your past as described in the Sovereign, Imperial and Royal Appointment. Do you remember the document? Damianos shot a quick glance to both men before taking Dan's book from behind the folds of his robe. Your book, Dan, has been updated in such a fashion that now you've nearly reached the last chapter. You mean the chapter I first read with Malou, when we first travelled to our past? Exactly. You have now come full circle, and you have relived your lives, and you've experienced your dreams firsthand. What about redeeming myself for my sins? I'm not the one who will grant you redemption, Dan. Only God can do that. But I'm sure he is prepared to grant you the return to the life you once knew as yours, as long as you do not trespass in such a manner to endanger the livelihood of others. I think I've learned my lesson in that regard. In view of what I have lived through in these past several weeks, I can tell you already that taking foolish risks as to endangering my life and the livelihood of others are not on the cards for me any more. Very good, Damianos declared, depositing Dan's book on the coffee table and standing up. All right, you two, let's go to that restaurant, shall we? And with a snap of his fingers, Damianos transported the three of them to an upscale restaurant in the city. When they landed, Damianos was now wearing a suit and tie, such as did his two companions and every other man in the restaurant. I wish one day I could do that, Gustavo remarked. That's so neat and practical. What's that? Dan asked, as the three of them followed the maitre d' to their table. Snapping my fingers to change clothes and to get to any place I decide to go. They sat down. I don't think you'll be able to do that, Gustavo, Damianos countered. It's rather a burden to change environment and attire at, at every turn. He stopped and chuckled. I never know in advance where or what time span I should send my charges, which makes it difficult to choose the proper clothes to wear in the circumstances. What's more, once I make the choice and snap my fingers, the event has occurred and cannot be changed. I can see that you might have some trouble when dealing with different races or various customs, Dan said. Precisely. For the men it's not that difficult, but for women it can be a chore. Have you ever made a mistake? On a couple of occasions, yes, I did, Gustavo. You see, I'm not infallible, and I sometimes lose track of time. I remember a long time ago, one of the ladies I was accompanying to a ball in the 16th century appeared at the top of the grand staircase of the ballroom, dressed as if going to her garden in the Napoleon era. Fortunately, only a handful of people noticed the blunder, and I was able to get her into another dress rather quickly. I've heard of wardrobe malfunction before, Gustavo said, chuckling. But that one takes the cake. Was the lady annoyed with you? No, not really, and rather shocked, yes, but it all came right in the end. They fell silent for a moment when the waiter brought the wine and appetizers to the table. They then ordered an entree and a dessert. Gustavo and Dan were hungry. When the meal was served, one could only hear the background noise of the busy restaurant. Damianos was observing them. This was the end of the road for them. They soon would part company, and truth be told, he would miss them, especially Dan and his family. When they returned home, Chippewa, the dreammaker, was waiting for the trio. He stood up from the sofa and smiled, dressed in his old cowboy outfit. With jeans, plaid shirt and battered straw hat, he looked happy. Dan was overwhelmed, his emotions were brimming with joy. Dear old friend, how are you? he said, shaking Chippewa's hand and then giving him a manly hug. Well, as you can see, Dan, Chippewa replied, turning to Damianos. I'm glad you called on me to close the circle of Dan's life. It is a great honour indeed. You know very well this is not of my doing. God himself thought you needed to finish the job you started. Nothing to do with honour. It's just something you alone could do. Always the same gruff old cat, aren't you? Chippewa said, smiling and shaking his head. There will be time yet, and when we return to Pahokee to discuss this matter at length, will it not? As you say, dear friend, Damianos replied, draping an arm across Chippewa's shoulders. OK, then, the latter said, turning to Gustavo. I knew, my royal companion, was it surprising for you to find out that your ancestors were of the same lineage of those of Dan here? Gustavo shook his head. I knew it had to be something like that, Chippewa. From the first moment I laid eyes on Dan, 
I knew we were going to be friends, if nothing more. He was such an odd bird. When he jumped out of bed in the morning to search for his dream catcher, I knew something was wrong with the guy. As the four men broke down in loud laughter, they sat down in the living room. Dan's book was still on the coffee table, where Damien Nurse had left it before going to the restaurant.